Okay, y'all, I'm going strictly off memory, darlings. I did watch the episode, um, but I ain't, like, take down any notes or whatever. So here we go. Come on, Jesus. Come on in the room. Fix it, Jesus. Phaedra Park, my God. Okay, so the episode began with um, where it left off last week with Kenya and Sheree kind of getting into it. Um, right after they started, after Kenya made her bitch-ass comment to Sheree, um, she immediately apologized for that. Um, she saw them veins popping out um, Sheree's neck, and she saw that Sheree, you know, had muscles a little bit more than she does. So she was just like, "All right, let me let me just apologize, this bitch, bitch. You know, I was just playing with you. That's just your um, initiation back into the group, bitch. You know." And Sheree was like, "Okay, now, okay." So Kenya, um, she decides to leave, um, and and Sheree talks, sit down and talk to the girls, um, which was Marlo, uh, Candy, Phaedra, Cynthia. Mallory. Um, so anyway, um, Cynthia and Mallory, they like go off to the side. Then here comes Peter in all his pink, um, looking like a chocolate covered um, Pepto Bismol pill. And he comes over and he's just like, um, hey, what's up? What's going on? It was just like, well, we heard that she was starting drama early or whatever. Um, Peter explained that um, him and Kenya had kind of had a little moment um, because he reached out to hug Kenya. Kenya didn't want to hug him back. Um, because of, you know, the whole thing that was going on with Peter and um, the girl from North Carolina in his bar, uh, you know, him hugging her and all that, y'all know. Um, so they was just talking and, and Peter started to get upset and, and Cynthia was like, well, you just need to calm down. You need to just make the best of it. Cynthia was very much so on, on her girlfriend's side, which is Kenya. Um, so Peter decides to walk away because he's pissed off or whatever. Okay, so the next scene, we get into Kenya, meeting with Kim Fields, Tootie, from the Packs of Life, darling, and um, also Regine from Living Single. Love that show. Still watch the reruns. And um, they're talking in, in this and that. And she, um, Kim Fields has become a director along with being a mother, entrepreneur, a wife, um, and any and everything else that she is. Um, so she's directed, you know, many things in the past. Um, and, and Kenya wants to bring her on um, as a director for her show, um, Life Twirls On. That only went to YouTube. Now, um, so she's looking for directors. You know, Kenya invested all her money into this project. But I guess it wasn't as big of a success as she would think, as she thought that it would be. Um, but things like this take time, you know, you, you're taking a chance on everything in life. Um, so she definitely, having somebody like Kim Fields would be pretty good for her, um, for a brand. So, um, they meet up at Kim Fields' office and, and, you know, they work, you know, Kenya, she knows a lot of people. Kenya's kind of like, um, Lala, Carmelo Anthony's wife, y'all know Lala from MTV and all that. She's kind of like, um, Lala in the sense that she has a lot of friends uh, the celebrity friends. A lot of people know of Kenya. That's one thing I can say about Kenya. Kenya does a lot and is extra on this show. However, um, she does have the um, receipts to back it up. Show me the receipts, Whitney Houston. Um, so they're talking, and, and Kim, Kim kind of just looking at her like, okay. Um, asking her, would you come on as a director for my project? Kim was like, look, uh, no. You know, I got my own stuff going on. She really didn't want to say no, but it was just funny, like, seeing her reactions. Um, all right, so Kim feels, you know, she's married and, and all this good stuff. Been married for eight years. Uh, got two little boys. Um, she's not interested in having any more kids. I love it. I know that shit, right? Um, so I'm sure her and Phaedra's going to bond later on in, episode, later on in the season because Phaedra got two young boys, just like she do. They're actually probably around the same age as, as, her, as Phaedra boys, too. It's interesting. Um... And, yeah, she has this uh, maternity line thing that's coming out. Uh, she has many different businesses that she's working on. Um, and, yeah, that's about it. I'll start with Kim Fields. Hey, Kim. Um, all right. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, Candy and the team meet up um, at the Candy Factory. So, we have Don Juan, Todd, the guy named Jonathan. Come on! And, you know, and that's about it. And so they're sitting around talking. They're trying to plan a baby shower, trying to plan things. Candy has decided that she wants to open up a restaurant. That's very interesting. All right, whatever, girl. 
Um, and so, you know, I mean, there it is. All right. Um, Phaedra meets up with Cynthia, which is rare. They both look extremely cute in their little dresses. They were so cute. Um, and on the other side of town, Candy and Sheree is meeting up. And Sheree brings her two daughters. We met the oldest daughter, like, um, whichever was the last season that Sheree was on there before she came back this season. And um, we also met the younger daughter who was little last time we saw her. Now she's like grown and tall and pretty. I was like, wow, time really does fly. I haven't realized, I didn't realize the Real Housewives of Atlanta been on that long. Um, so they're sitting around and talking. Um, Cynthia and Phaedra, they're talking about um, the whole thing that went down with Kenya and Sheree and that whole moment. Also, Phaedra decides to do an impression of Mallory, Cynthia's sister, because um, Mallory pretty much spilled all the tea to them about, you know, what's really going on behind closed doors in their relationship. Cynthia very much so didn't want to talk about it, but she did apologize about how everything went down with Phaedra last season. And um, so Phaedra was just like, I'll forgive and never forget. Phaedra definitely, um, in a way, is holding a grudge about everything that went down for sure. Um, Candy and Sheree is talking, and of course they're talking about Phaedra. And um, Candy was like, it's just crazy. Um, Phaedra all of a sudden got friends with Nene. Sheree was like, that's a shock because they wasn't friends. They didn't like each other and all this and that. I guess, you know, as we saw, it, it was crazy to a lot of us. I was just like, really? Nene didn't even know who the hell Phaedra was, but whatever. Um, so they ended up wrapping it up, and they just realized they just need to talk to each other. I guess. We'll get to that was the last thing. We'll get to that later. All right. Um let's see. Portia. Portia has decided to um she's trying to, you know, be an entrepreneur and she has a hairline on uh, nakedhair.com, something like that. And uh, she's also working on lingerie and she meets up with her team and it was just like, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm, um, you know, on the fence, you know, I just want my stuff to be good. Um, like, um, Jessica Simpson, you know, a brand to, you know, just get grow to grow and grow and grow and grow like Jessica Simpson, like, um, Jessica Beal. She met Jessica Alba, ding dong. Um, and so she just also decides in this meeting to have, um, a sip and see, I believe that's what she called it. Anyway, just a party to introduce her boyfriend to all her family and friends. I thought this was the silliest idea. Like, how overwhelming, first of all. You tell him that I'm just inviting my family over or some shit. I don't know what she told him because he was obviously shocked when he walked in. He walked in. She done invited her mama, her sister, her close, close friends, all the housewives. It's just like, it's a lot. A couple of extras around, being nosy. I was just like, really, Portia? You just met this dude. Y'all been together a month, and you just that head over heels with him. And they also spilled a little tea, allegedly, that he had been messing around with a transgendered or so once upon a time. That's what Candy spilled that tea. So um, I told y'all in my last review of Real Housewives of Atlanta um, that, you know, if something was up with him you can you know, a, you know a queen knows a queen all right i'll give you that uh so i knew some a little about him he kind of looked like a guy that that does porn anyway anyway um so he was just like shocked and overwhelmed he ended up talking to his friend at the party he was just like you know just keep it cool and this and that him and his friend is kind of I don't know. I feel like they crooks or something. But, you know, obviously, um, if you guys have read the blocks or whatever, apparently uh, Portia and the guy ain't together anyway. So, I mean, if you notice me looking to the side, I'm watching it now, the actual scene. She ended up making him um, her, his tr her trophy um, husband or a trophy man or whatever, you know, because she was like a trophy wife. You know, it was all an inside joke thing. It was stupid, stupid, stupid. Um, we find out that her sister Lauren is pregnant. Um, and Portia's a little jealous because she, her being the older sister, she always thought that she would get pregnant first, but she, you know, sometimes things just don't work out the way that you plan. But Lauren is pregnant. Um, and yeah, she don't seem to be that excited about it because she didn't immediately tell Portia. Um, cause I'm sure that's news Portia would have been, you know, talking about, but hey, it is what it is. All right. Um, let's get to the last scene. 
I believe I've talked about everything, you guys. I believe so. Yeah, I've talked about everything that's worth mentioning. Um, okay, so we get into the last scene, and we have Phaedra, and, and Phaedra comes over to see Candy. Candy's about to bust. Ain't nobody there. And so they start to sit down and talk, and Candy was just like, you know, I just didn't appreciate how you treated me and how you went to and told Nene and Portia all our personal business and all that, and I didn't appreciate that. And Phaedra was just like, she was just sitting there listening to her, and then Phaedra was just like, well, I don't appreciate how you has my how you have my husband's belongings over your house and how people coming up to her while she at the grocery store and stuff. And, and saying, um, how can I get your husband's bike? Apollo had some bikes and stuff, like motorcycles, I guess, or mopeds or whatever. And um, coming up to me, and she was saying that people's coming up to her saying, um, how can I get the bike and what you selling it for and all that stuff? And and, and she said that she had the um, a government knocking on her door about that. And, and Candy was like, please, they're knocking on your door for many other things. They also, what's also a strain on their relationship is the fact that um, Todd had did the um, the workout tape with them, and Phaedra paid him most of the money, but didn't pay him all of the money. Um, and apparently, um, Candy was like, "You owe him like eight thousand. Phaedra was like five, and and so of course she gonna knock it down. I I, I just don't understand why that's news, like. That was like two or three seasons ago when Phaedra did that workout tape when she was battling with Kenya. So like I don't understand why this why they're bringing this old shit up. Like I honestly didn't even realize it was Todd's company that that did the tape for Phaedra. I didn't even realize that. Y'all let me know if y'all knew. So all this is just news to me and all this is just stupid. It's like why should we care about this? Like y'all seen her arguing about that and Todd. He keep putting pressure on Candy. That's your girl. You need to do this. You need to talk to her. Like, why don't you talk to Pedro? You don't have to be disrespectful, but everybody's grown. At the end of the day, Candy ain't got nothing to do with the workout tape. That was y'all's thing that y'all had going down. So you need to talk to Phaedra about it and not have her to go through Candy for you. Like, you grown. Step up, little man. Get on a stool and talk to Phaedra. Like, I don't understand that. Um, so, anyway, they, they're both emotional, especially Candy. Phaedra's just like, you know what, I, at the end of the day, I will always be closer to you than the other ladies. You know, you was there when both my kids was born, you was in the hospital room, and, and, you know, you saw my coochie, and I don't let everybody see my coochie. <laughs> it was, you know, it was a really cute scene. Um, so that was pretty much it, you guys. Uh, that was pretty much this episode. This episode was pretty dull. Uh, they're gonna have to step it up this season seriously and i truly hope they do um let's see uh actually on watch what happens live after that um it was t-pain and kenya moore that was really funny t-pain is a hoot uh so yeah um i believe i got everything you guys i truly do let me look at this really quick uh yeah what I am excited about is to see Cynthia and Portia, Cynthia and Peter, and in their whole conversation, how things is going down with that. But once again, that whole video, we saw that video like a year or so ago, and now it's all of a sudden an issue. It's just, you know, it's, it's taping. It's just, it's just a whole lot of um, old shit that's bringing up. It's all of a sudden issues right now, but whatever. With that said, I'm Mr. Chalaki. Mr. Chilaco Google Plus. Follow me at It's Kings World on Twitter. Chase Kim was here on Facebook and at It's Kings World on Instagram. Yes, I am. All right, you guys. Um, I'll see you guys later. And you guys tell me what y'all thought about this review and this episode. All right. Bye.